page six, we have another shape point for you. It says find the volume of solid that lies under the paraboloid z equals to x squared plus y squared above x five plane and inside the cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to two x. Let's take a look at the a graph here. So here you have your z equals to x squared plus y squared, which is your paraboloid. Okay, we have our paraboloid here, and you have your cylinder x squared plus y squared equals to 2x. So this is your cylinder and it is above x y plane. Do you see the intersection between these two? Very well. So take a look at it. The intersection. As you can see, the boundary of the intersection is just a circle. The important part is that this intersection, this intersection, this intersection between these two surfaces has a projection on x, y plane and it's not centered at the origin. Guys, it's on the first and fourth quadrant. Take a look at this. On the first and fourth quadrant. So our job, our goal is to find, find the boundary, boundaries for this intersection. Well, let's take a look at it. Here we have our x, here we have our y, and then here you have your circle and the points inside the circle, all of them. So here, we want to find the boundaries for our R, the radius, and also the theta. How do we do that? What are these boundaries? Note that, again, this circle is not centered at the origin and it doesn't have a fixed, a fixed radius. The radius is changing from zero to this boundary. But what is this boundary? What is this function here? Okay, to find this function, I'm going to rewrite my cylinder using polar form. So I have x squared plus y squared equals to 2x. Okay, if x is r cosine theta, I get r squared cosine squared theta plus my y is r sine theta, so r squared sine squared theta equals to 2r cosine theta. So on the left hand side, if I find out r squared, this is going to be r squared equals to 2r cosine theta. Very well. So it means that your r is equal to 2 cosine theta. So r starts from 0 and it reaches out to the boundary 2 cosine theta. 2 cosine theta. As theta decreases, getting smaller and smaller, so your r is getting closer and closer to this point. So my r ranges between 0, it goes to 2 cosine theta. 0 to 2 cosine theta. How about your theta? What about your angle? Your angle ranges between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So remember that you have pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. Okay, we have all the information that we need. The volume, the double integral. So suppose this is your region, let us call it region R over region R of this function, x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared, dA can be written as the double integral. So r squared cosine squared plus r squared sine squared, it gives you r squared, r dr. d theta is your dA, and your r ranges between zero to 2 cosine theta, and your theta ranges between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. 
There you go. So remember that because of symmetry, you can just write it as two times zero pi over two. Let me use a different color so you haven't made some changes here. Two times zero over pi over two. And here I have my inner integral, zero to two cosine theta. And here I have r cubed dr d theta. So let us take the inner integral first and then simplify this to integral 0 pi over 2 and here you have 1 fourth r to the fourth and r ranges between 0 to 2 cosine theta d theta very well so i'm going to simplify this and i get a half and 0 to pi over 2 and if you plug in zero, you're not worried about zero because the term is zero. So you might to just plug in two cosine theta. So here you have, let's see, 16 cosine to the fourth of theta. You're going to get back to elementary calculus and rewrite cosine to the second. First of all, cosine to the second of theta is one plus cosine two theta divided by two. So cosine to the fourth of theta is one plus cosine two theta raised to the second power divided by four. If you write it in expanded form, this is equal to one plus two cosine two theta plus cosine squared two theta. Again, you have to use the formula that we learned before and simplify this. If you simplify this, you get 8 integral 0 to pi over 2 cosine to the fourth of theta d theta, which can be written as 8. So the integral 0 to pi over 2, here you have cosine to the fourth, it means that you have 1 plus cosine 2 theta divided by 2 raised to the second power. This is equal to, so if you just factor this out, you get 2 integral 0 pi over 2, and here you have 1 plus cosine squared 2 theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta, d theta. Very well. So again, for cosine squared 2 theta, you're going to have 1 plus 1 plus cosine 4 theta divided by 2. So 1 plus a half gives you 3 halves. 3 halves plus cosine 4 theta divided by 2. Very well. So in this case, if you take the integral of cosine, and cosine, cosine 4 theta, cosine 2 theta, both of these are going to be sine, sine 4 theta, sine 2 theta, and if you plug in 0, if you plug in pi over 2, these two terms are going to eventually be 0. So let us take a look at this. We have 3 halves, or 3 times pi over 2, which is 3 pi over 2. Note that the integral of, you can check this, the integral of cosine 4 theta and cosine 2 theta are going to be sine 4 theta, cosine and sine 2 theta divided by 4 divided by 2. And if you plug in pi over 2, those terms are going to be zero. So we're not worried about that. We're just going to focus on 3 over 2. 